Junior Mine and Weekly, StockPulse.com production. We track the action of the individual equities markets within the commodity sector. Joining me to break down the action for this week, Alan Berry of the Alan Berry Reports. All right, Al, before we get to the equities here, let's run through the big picture. Still COVID-19 overhead here. Gold's in a good spot. Still looks like a lack of equity news, although it looked like it picked up this week a little bit. So how do you kind of see the, the big picture before we drill into the individual equities? Well, we kind of saw the lack of news in the junior space well before the PDAC that uh, kind of caught my attention because I hadn't seen it quite that slow for a long time as far as news from juniors. And, you know, I, I don't just bring this point up a lot just to say it. it it's extremely important <clears throat> to the long-term situation with the price of gold and in the mining sector. The most important sector, subsector of the mining space right now is exploration. It's the one that has gone unloved for the longest period of time, but because the majors were busy mining out all their big mines and high grading a lot of their big mines when the price of these metals were down, they haven't been, the industry hasn't been replacing what's been mined every year. So this is an extremely important indicator for the long-term price of gold that, uh, and also what to focus on in the mining space. The industry needs exploration bad, exploration success badly. And uh, right now they're not really valuing it and there's not really a lot of it going on to value. But we do see that there's serious money around um, SSR, which used to be Silver Standard, uh, just put $25 million into another silver company, SIL. That has to tell you a lot about what, they, what a big company like an SSR thinks about the assets that an SIL has to put $25 million into the company. So... It's not that there's no money around. There's money around for select projects. And I think investors want to be that way as well. Look for good quality select projects in the exploration space. Sharpen your pencils when it comes to exploration. Um, you know, a lot of investors, when I first got into the business, they understood a lot more about exploration than they do now. And I think those that uh, sharpen their pencils and do their homework, they're going to be the huge winners of this uh, upcoming extreme bull market for the price of gold. So I think that's what we sort of give everybody a leg up on here on the shows is being a good filter for them to do their homework on. And uh, But then you really got to understand what these companies are doing and why. Okay, let's get into it here. First one up on the list, Philo Mining. Latest drill results from its recently completed 1920 drill program. It's 100% owned Philo del Sol project in the border of Chile and Argentina, one we haven't covered before. Run through why you like this one. Yeah, this is a new one that popped onto my screen. Uh, the Lundines are involved with this one, but, uh, you know, there's not a lot of really great copper exploration stories out there, probably well, significantly less than maybe even in gold, but um, this Lundin Group company, what caught my attention initially was a thousand meters of nearly 1% copper equivalent. Um, that's looking pretty pretty interesting. Uh, that's your open pick kind of target, big tonnage, lower grade, but even in a lower grade, um, even in that lower grade category, this kind of pops up that, uh, at the you know, a lot of companies are talking about less than, well, less than 1% uh, copper equivalent these days. So to have it near, you know, pretty much virtually at a percent there for over a thousand meters, pretty nice looking stuff. Adam Lundin runs the company. What I like about, and I just got to read off this quote because I like when companies know what they're doing about writing what's going on with the company. With the results of this past, and I'm quoting Adam, with the results of this past season's drilling, the true size of the Phila del Sol mineralized system is becoming apparent. We now have three holes in excess of one kilometer long, spanning a north-south distance of one kilometer, and still have not drilled out of, the, out of mineralization. 
These are holes are within an area where we have drilled continuous mineralization over a north-south distance of almost five kilometers. Uh, this area contains our, our 425 million ton indicated resource, but clearly the extensive scale of the systems yet to be defined. Of course, size is only part of the story, and these recent holes continue to intersect impressive copper, gold, and silver grades within and beyond the current resource. So, I mean, right there, that's how you rate quotes. They put all, everything you need to know is in that quote, and it's well presented. I get it, it's a big target. They've already got a resource on it. Looks like they can add to that resource. They're quite excited about it. Um, 88 million shares out. I like what I see in the chart and in the news. So, and I really like when companies know how to do corporate communication. And uh, this one definitely falls into that category. Okay, next one up here, Contact Gold. Some excellent recoveries from bottle roll tests at the Bravo and Echo Zones. The Green Springs Gold Project, located in Cortez Trend in Nevada. What caught your eye with this release? Yeah, they, they you know, when I see companies doing $750,000 financings, um, you know, and uh, that they're always they're doing work like drilling or even though I'm not a big fan of, ver you know, early stage exploration running to do uh, bottle roll tests for, uh, you know, recovery. Hey, it's a, it's a good number they came up with, so that's a good sign. I'm more interested in them drilling at this stage to see if they have enough of something to worry about uh, the metallurgy on, but they've done it raised up a little money, which tells me they respect the uh, shareholders, don't want to dilute too much. Uh, 82 million shares. I'm trying to be really disciplined these days about the companies I bring on the show. I'm, I don't want to be talking about diluted stock pigs if I don't have to. Sometimes the project is so big that even those pass through the filters, but it's a lot easier when you're not dealing with a diluted stock. Uh, that has good news to see the investors make some money on it. So that's why I'm under that. But yes, uh, C has a nice chart. Good projects. Nevada play. I like what I see on the drilling and uh, definitely want to keep an eye on with a sub $10 million uh, valuation. Okay, next one up here. Baytex Energy Corp. BTE on the venture. Don't get into oil too much, but a lot of destruction in the sector. What's appealing about Baytex? Um, yeah, Rob, uh, why this one caught my attention is um, every once in a while oil gets beaten down so badly that uh, I start looking at oil deals. And, um, you know, if you unless you've been sleeping under a rock, uh, everybody has seen how gold has just fallen out of bed and recently traded at lows that we haven't seen since 1999. And as you said, when we were talking about this earlier, uh, the stock chart looks horrid. Um, it looks, it's been hammered down. But everybody on the planet knows about how badly oil has gotten beaten down. So where do we go from here? I don't think that oil can stay down here very long. The Saudis and the Russians over their internal battle, I don't know exactly what it's over, but seems to be a pretty significant battle that they're, you know, pounding oil down to nearly 10 bucks a barrel and uh, and leaving a lot of money on the table. Um, you know, I get that there's going to be a slowdown in the demand from all this, uh, all this coronavirus, um, people staying at home, but they're not going to stay at home forever. And once they do get out of, out, of, out of the house and start moving around again, they're going to get some pretty good deals on oil for a while. But I, I just can't see it staying as low for very long. And therefore, I started to look for some oil stocks. Baytex Energy, um, you know, before it got hammered down, was about $1.50 stock. Uh, now they're down to, what, $0.32, cents, I think, today, something like that. Uh, and... Um, I like that, I, I'm one, I'm looking for oil stock turnaround in place. Um, and anytime there's a great turnaround, you're going to see stocks that have gotten killed. But after they've gotten killed, I'm looking for a couple of technical indicators. You know, have they made a bottom? And recently the company made a double bottom. 
that's a very bullish indicator for me. I think that the next big technical indicator will be when they do a um, a bullish uh, a bull, bullish cross. I would expect that to happen at about 75 cents. So I, I think that you know there's a double in here, just to get back to sort of some rea some reasonable uh, reality. And uh, so yeah, I'm looking at this as a trade and other oils as a trade, but uh, I think this one could uh, could bounce back quite nicely. Okay, last one up on the list here, one we have covered several times, Sockman Minerals to initiate a short follow-up drill program at Moosehead in central Newfoundland. They hit the mark a lot here, assuming you like their follow-up program. And just when I said I was trying to keep everything under 100 million shares, I brought one with just slightly over 100 million shares. But, you know, the, I think the investors have to be really disciplined when it comes to that. Yes, and Eric's brought... Uh, can buy companies that are extremely diluted because he can buy half the company if he really wants to. Um, but, but as far as the average investors go, you're in there with the rest of the normal people in the world. And having companies that are too diluted uh, makes for a tough go of it. Now, SIC sort of sits right on the uh, right on the cusp of a little too much stock up for me. I've, Hundred million when they're in their early days of exploration. What does make me, you know, still want to like the company and watch for their news is that I, they're looking for super high grade. If they if they catch a zone that looks like it could be mine, this company would have a much higher valuation. So I think you need to look at it for that reason. It's not pie in the sky. They've already drilled into a high grade gold system. Now it's can they find enough of that uh, rock that sort of hangs together that looks like it might be a mine. And then I, I think that's a, a major breakthrough for the company. And uh, the news that caught my attention recently is they finished off a, a, a phase of drilling. And as they were waiting for the assay results, the weather was still cooperative. So they decided to go in there with some more drilling, an unexpected drill program, Rob. So... Let's hope that unexpected drill program catches some thickness to the high grade and uh, it's off to the races time. But uh, definitely one that could be a lotto ticket that uh, I think you want to have a little bit of a bet on. Okay, appreciate that breakdown. Al, before I let you go, let's run through COVID-19 again and how you see uh, us moving forward. Everything's mostly on hold now. I think there's some indications that May 1st things might loosen up. We're already starved on exploration news. How do you kind of see things moving forward here? This is very vital to get these guys back in business. A lot of drill programs planned. Will everything happen, just kind of be late in the game, or will this kind of uh, impact moving forward and some programs may not get done? Well, it just makes the, 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 the argument for much higher prices of gold, silver, and other metals much stronger because, you know, not only do you need more discoveries now, to, for for uh, supply now now you can't do any exploration. Uh, Mexico specific is a place I watch the closest because um, you know I live here and and uh, our local economy is affected by it. Mining is an important part of the business. It sounds like uh, May 15 they're going to uh, re re remove the uh, any uh, restrictions on mining. So. Um, I think Mexico is one of the more um, progressive mining jurisdictions, so I'm glad to see we're probably, what, a few weeks away from being able to uh, get back to business. Uh, Quebec, I heard that uh, they're opening up the, 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 the exploration again. Some places like Nevada have not even been uh, affected. Uh, there's other places that haven't been affected. There's, you know, some will be slower, some will be faster. I think your Quebecs and your, you know, Mexicos are probably the first out of the gate. Um, British Columbia, I don't know. I talked to my buddy up there and um, uh, who's, uh, you know, watches the politics and everything else. And uh, apparently the, the, the BC government is not in any kind of rush to to get back to business. So, yeah, that could affect the Golden Triangle deals. I think I, I haven't really heard anything specific about the Yukon. Um, but, um, yeah, you, you got to, again, Rob, I think investors got to have, you know, their, their 
they're sharp in their pencils and you know access is important uh permitting is important it's part of the exploration cycle so pay attention to it this is mr market giving you a lesson that you know not all jurisdictions are the same so you know you better pay attention you can't just say oh well, mine is shut down now. Well, it's shut down in places, not shut down in other places. Yeah, and what uh, what words of wisdom do uh, you feed these you know, CEOs like yourself, I guess, when things are like this? The, the markets are still open. There's more people at home than ever uh, digesting information. There's no pro sports. Uh, I think now's the time to absolutely uh, utilize every every resource at your disposal. All these guys are, are certainly treasury challenged, so they can't go out and just spread money around. But, but boy, I tell you, I think, I think now is the time to separate yourself from the pack. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, the pack is something I've always kind of been disgusted in in this business, to be quite honest. This is kind of what I always try to, to model myself the opposite of. And, uh, you know, so let's talk about that. What's, what's the average junior mining company out there right now? It's a lifestyle company with too much stock out and management that owns too little stock. Right there, I just gave investors a filter that will get rid of about um, 85% of the juniors out there. They could all be removed from the market, and I wouldn't care. Actually, I'd be happy. I'd like there to be less junky companies out there that are you know, just raising money in order to raise money to pay themselves. And they don't really have any stock, so they don't really care about the stock. So the stock is diluted and then they become a rollback candidate. The more that investors stay away from that stuff, the better as far as I'm concerned. But um, I also think that there's going to be a new wave of people coming into this sector with gold getting stronger. Silver will soon follow. I think things are lining up quite nicely for copper and some other base metals. And uh, when they come into this space, to find the real quality juniors, um, you know, they're going to have a short menu. To find the real quality uh, companies in that category that I just did a show with Premier Gold uh, and Hidden Treasures was because, because, you know, there's just not enough middle tier exploration companies. They all got taken out in the 2001 to 2011 window. Um, so if I'm giving advice to my peers, CEOs out there in the junior exploration market, like Rob said, you know, right now people are sitting at home and they want to hear about, they want to, they, they're looking for content. They want to, they're investors. They want to hear about your company going into the turtle position Covering up, covering up just shows me another sign that, you know, there's another uh, indicator of a uh, potential um, lifestyle company. We're not in the timing of the, the market perfectly business. We're in the exploration put business. Put holes in the ground. That's your job. Um, if you want to get paid good for that, find something good. Uh, I'd love to see more of these lifestyle companies, you know, eliminated from the business. Hopefully, Mr. Market is kind of eliminating some of them now, but they're getting long in the tooth and we don't really need them in the business. What we do need is new blood in the business that differentiates between lifestyle companies and real exploration. And if you want me to give you the, the nut and bolts of the real exploration, it's the companies that are always doing geophysics or, or my our exploration and and the, the best ones in that category you want to look for are the ones that don't have diluted stock, but stocks out structures. <clears throat> and uh, that gives you sort of a really good combination. It means that they're interested in putting holes in the ground and they're not interested in diluting the stock so that if they find something significant, the stock can perform well for all the shareholders. My company happens to be one of those companies, which is Advanced Gold and uh, advancedgold.ca is our website so i always uh, invite people to check us out okay appreciate that al it's alan barry the alan barry reports that's it for this week's show if you're a fan of the information please subscribe to the channel share the broadcast 
And please check out the site if you get a chance, stockpulse.com. Remember, our mission is to deliver timely and accurate equity news, data, and media to investors so they can make an informed investment decision. Back next week with another breakdown here of the equities markets. Hopefully you can utilize to enhance your portfolio.